Get that fucking crack out of your life. You have legacies to build. We grew that business from 3.4 million to 17.1. Horsepower, not horse shit. You want to be the parent that's an ally. They don't need another fucking friend. Not everybody's cup of whiskey. Toughest advice for the toughest businessman. Be relentless. There's an old indigenous native Indian tale. One of the elders is sitting by the fire and he's speaking with a young boy and he's telling him the tale of the good wolf versus the bad wolf. And he tells the little boy, he says, inside of all of us lives two wolves, a good wolf and a bad wolf. The good wolf is, stands for generosity, kindness, compassion, empathy, abundance, while the bad wolf that resides inside of us is, stands for scarcity, judgment, laziness, jealousy, um, all of these negative forces. And he tells the little boy, he says, there is always a battle going on inside of you. There will always be a battle between the good wolf and the bad wolf. And this is something that you're going to have to manage your entire life. The battle inside of you, the good wolf versus the bad wolf. And the little boy thinks about it for a minute and then he asked the elder, he said, well, which wolf wins? If it's a battle between the two wolves, if it's a constant and never ending battle between the two wolves, which wolf wins? And the elder turns and looks the boy, little boy in the eye and says, the one you feed. The one you feed. So I believe that there is a good wolf and a bad wolf inside of each of us, myself included. And I believe that it is a constant and never ending battle. It is a war between good and bad, between scarcity and abundance between compassion, kindness, empathy versus sadness, selfishness, jealousy, anger. Two wolves inside of you going at it day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. Which one wins? Which wolf inside of you wins? The one you feed. The one you feed. So in today's world with so much noise, with so much toxic inputs, we are, if we don't control, if we don't control the inputs in our life, if you wake up every morning and you lose control of your day within the first 10 minutes, like most businessmen, like most husbands and fathers, then you don't stand a chance. The bad wolf will flourish in you. You'll get up, you'll grab your phone, you'll check your messages, you'll check anti-social media, you'll check sports, you'll check politics, you'll check the news, You'll tech, you'll, all of these toxic platforms that are designed as an attack on your family, they're an attack on your mental health, they're an attack on your masculinity, they're an attack on you, period. Or you can be the type of elite man who gets up, splashes some water on his face, doesn't have any technology in his bedroom, say, says his prayers, puts on his shoes, 
gets outside in nature and the weather and the sunshine and the rain and walks in solitude for half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour, a completely tech-free power walk where you get to listen to your intuition, listen to your golden gut, listen to your creator, solve problems, do a mental mind dump, come back, drink some more water, do some reading out of real books, um, you know, physically um, grow your mind, your thinking, and also then some Operation Money Suck where you work on your copywriting, your marketing, you do something that will bring you present and future bank, something that will bring you money now and money in the future. And this is, this is, these are all things that feed the good wolf. These are all things that, that make you an elite man. Also things like generosity and kindness and empathy, understanding, you know, what it's really like to work, walk in a certain person's shoes, putting yourself in their situation, being the type of friend who listens to hear, listens to understand, not just listens to reply. Most men just listen to reply. You don't really listen to your queen. You don't really listen to your children. You just listen to respond. You listen to preach after, you listen to give a sermon, you listen to talk about you, and you don't listen to understand. You don't listen to hear what the person is really saying. You, uh, when we do kind things and we, we, uh, we raise money and we help charities and we spend time with our children and we go on date nights, um, all of these things, when we serve other people, when we serve those we've been called to help, that's all the times that we continue to feed the good wolf. We also can feed the bad wolf when we have feelings of jealousy or we have feelings of anger or frustration. We're jealous about somebody else's success. We're, uh, we're, uh, we're rooting for people to lose. Um, you know, you're, you've got a, a scarcity mindset where you're hoarding your ideas, you're not sharing what you're learning, you, you're not generous with your time or your money. A, mi a scarcity mindset. A scarcity mindset, I can't afford that, I can't donate that, I can't give that, I can't do that. That's all feeding the bad wolf. The direct polar opposite of that is the mindset of pure abundance, where you, you have a mindset of, how can I afford that? How can I, how can I, what can I do to afford that? How can I buy that? How can I build that? How can I donate that money? How can I make a, a difference in this world? How can I serve other people? That's feeding the good wolf. When you physically go for a walk out in nature and you listen to your golden God and your intuition and you, you listen to your creator and you have time in solitude, tech-free, tech uh, a walk out in nature, in the wind, in the rain, in the cold, in the heat, in the smog, in my case, feeding the good wolf. When you get up and you say a, a prayer of gratitude in the morning, I start my day on my knees and I never ever ask my God for anything. I never ask the Lord for anything. I have everything a man could ever want in this world. So when I pray for four or five minutes first thing in the morning, I never ask for anything. I would be ashamed to ask for anything because I already have everything I need. I have a, a loving and supportive um, um, wife. I have a, a healthy, intelligent, loving child. My parents are still alive and well at age 90. I live in the two greatest countries in the world. I, I live in the greatest time in history to be alive, 2023. I'm awash like you in abundance, in opportunity, in wealth. 
Um, I've got on, online opportunities, offline opportunities. I've got my number one wealth, which is good health. I've, I've got everything a man could ever dream and ask for. So I never ask for anything. I just thank God for what I do have. I'm, I'm grateful for what I do have. That feeds the good wolf. Every time I sit down and I read for a, a newsletter or a good book every morning, I, I, I read for an hour. I used to start, I used to set a goal to read 10 pages a day and then it was 15 pages a day. Physical books, physical newsletters. Um, I'm feeding my mind. I'm feeding my mind, which is feeding the good wolf. After I sit down and read for an hour, my attitude is completely different. My mindset is completely different. I've got an abundance mindset. Um, I've given myself a, a, a cerebral workout. Nothing, nothing, your, your brain is a, uh, is a muscle. And if you don't work it out with physical reading, with paper and, and uh, ink reading, it just like any other muscle, it shrinks. That's how you end up with a three second attention span or a seven second attention span. You're not reading physical books, physical newsletters. Um, you're, not, you're not working your mind every day. When I work my mind every day, that feeds the good wolf. When I do Operation Money Suck, which is my marketing, when I sit down and copyright and work on my advertising and uh, write my emails and, and write my telegrams and write articles for my newsletter, uh, I'll work on ads, online ads, I'll work on my webinars, all that stuff that brings me future money, present bank and future bank, that's all feeding the good wolf. Because when, I, when we build things as entrepreneurs, when you build things as an entrepreneur, you're creating wealth in society, you're creating jobs, you're creating tax dollars, you're building things that people will use, you're serving other people, you're creating value. You're doing the opposite of the bad wolves, the takers, the takers, the do-nothings, the pretenders, the excuse makers. You're the opposite. When you, when you uh, perform your marketing, your advertising, and your sales uh, disciplines every day, you're feeding the good wolf. You're showing your children, you're showing your queen the power of entrepreneurship, the power of building something that's larger than yourself, something that builds and creates value for other human beings. Entrepreneurship is the ultimate building of the good wolf. You're hiring people, you're creating jobs, you're supporting charities, your tax dollars go towards hospitals, roads, bridges, schools. Man, oh man, there is nothing, nothing higher than entrepreneurship. I tip my hat to you as a small business owner and entrepreneur. You're feeding the good wolf every single day. Prayer feeds the good wolf journaling, writing a few things in your journal every day like I do. I just get up and write five things I'm grateful for. Five ordinary things. It could be something as simple as, you know, good health to walk, my eyes to see. It could be a, a roof over my head, a warm bed. It could be a clean glass of water. With the forest fires we're going through here over the last four days, I, 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 great, I gave gratitude to clean air. We're not used to having the worst air quality in the, in the world. We have the worst air quality in the world now because we've had forest fires 50, 35 miles away for the last four or five days. And as you can see, this would normally be a clear and sunny day. So um, I'm a little crazy for being out here on my morning walk, but I did get up and do it. And uh, this is the kind of air quality we're dealing with. So um, these forest fires are only 35 miles away from my mom and dad's home. So something we're keeping an eye on. But I'm grateful for normally for clean air. I'm grateful for the firefighters that are putting their lives on the line to contain this and to solve this problem. I'm grateful for our police officers, our, our, our men and women in our military, past and pre present. Our, uh, our teachers, our doctors, our nurses, our first responders. Um, 
And you know, an attitude of gratitude feeds a good wolf. When you, uh, when you write your, your one or two goals down every morning and every night, as if you've achieved them. Um, I'm a seven figure business owner. I'm a six figure business owner. I do not drink alcohol. I walk one hour a day. I only eat foods that fuel my body. Those kind of things. When you write your goals down every day as if your one or two goals, that's feeding the good wolf. And helping other people, holding a door, smiling, getting out of your vehicle, you know, get not, not going through drive throughs going into the coffee house like I do every day, speaking to people, smiling, leaving a tip, may, leaving a donation to a charity, um, whatever it is, speaking to people, getting out and talking to people, that's feeding the good wolf. We isolate as entrepreneurs and that's feeding the bad wolf. We need to get out once a day, twice a day. We need to talk to people. I, I enjoy draw, um, t uh, taking my daughter to school and picking her up because it gives me a chance to get out of my truck and talk to the other parents, the other mums, the other dads. I love my morning coffee. I, I park the truck and walk in and um, gives me an opportunity to, to talk to people because most of the time I'm... Uh, um, I'm just, you know, working and writing at, by myself. So making sure I'm not just, I'm making sure I'm not a lone wolf. So all of that stuff, uh, talking to other people and, and socializing and meeting other people and getting out of your vehicle and holding doors and smiling and making somebody's day just a little bit better, that all feeds the good wolf. So you have to understand that the bad wolf is always going to be there. The good wolf is always going to be there. But you decide which one you feed. You decide which one you feed. You have an environment, your home and your business, where there's books out, your shoes are at the door, your rucking vest is at the door, you have your clothes laid out the night before, you have a lockbox that your cell phone goes in at 6 o'clock at night, you have family dinners with no technology, when you're home... You know, you're fully present with your wife and your children. You win the mornings and uh, you conquer the chaos of the afternoon. Return your emails, return your phone calls, all that stuff after lunch when you're lower energy. And then investing in the legacy that matters the most at night, which is uh, your wife and your children after 5 p.m. So that's all beyond, that's all within your control. You control your inputs, you control your friends, you, uh, you decide what you have and don't have in your world. And I'll tell you right now, man, you're either, every decision you make, every action you take, you're either feeding the good wolf or you're feeding the bad wolf. And you have to figure out a way that when the bad wolf comes to, to visit you, you don't want to walk, you don't want to read, you don't want to write, you don't want to even get out of bed. That's where environment matters. That's where your goals matter. Your mission matters. That's where your, your, um, your clothes laid out at the door matters. That's when, you know, all your stuff prepared the night before, the glass of water put out. That's where all that stuff matters. You set up an environment at home and at your business where you simply cannot misbehave. The foods in your fridge is feeding the good wolf. The foods in your cupboard is feeding the good wolf or feeding the bad wolf. Your alcohol or beer fridge or whatever, feeding the bad wolf. All of these things, TV, feeding the bad wolf. Uh, social media apps, feeding the bad wolf. News apps, feeding the bad wolf. I don't have access to any of that stuff. I, I couldn't get on social media. I don't watch the news. I don't watch any of that type of TV. I don't follow politics any longer and I watch just a little bit of pro sport. So really, I have to work hard to feed the bad wolf. Make it hard to feed the bad wolf. We don't have any alcohol in our home anymore since I stopped drinking. Uh, I'd have to get in my vehicle to buy a bag of chips or eat a bag of chips or I'd have to drive to, to eat fast food. So I make it extremely difficult for me to misbehave. And that's all about making decisions that feed the good wolf versus feed the bad wolf. If there's things in your life that are holding you back that feed the bad wolf, 
get rid of those things in your world. It could be a person, it could be an employee, it could be a toxic habit, it could be toxic places like social media and politics and news, it could be your cell phone addiction. Any of those things can be controlled so that you're feeding the good wolf instead. Get up every day and feed the good wolf. Get up every single day and feed the good wolf. And when the bad wolf comes knocking, have the power, your environment set up, that you don't have to depend on willpower, that you can take a few deep breaths, you can put on your shoes, you can head out the door, you can pray, you can do whatever it takes until that passes and boom, you're back on track. That's what to do when the bad wolf comes. You shoot him dead in his tracks with environment. Okay, you drink the glass of water, you win the morning. And once you've won the morning, half day discipline, half day discipline, then the afternoon you can just conquer the chaos. The bad wolf can have some time in the afternoon if you need it. But in the morning, the good wolf reigns supreme. In the evenings, the good wolf reigns supreme. Feed the good wolf and get rid of all the things in your world that feed the bad wolf. Do what I do uh, tonight when you get home. Make sure you hug your queen. Make sure you hug your children. If your children are older and don't live at home, make sure that you talk to them every day on the phone. Not a text, not an email, not a message. They need to hear their dad's voice every day. You may think that your kids are 22, 26 and they don't need you. That's bullshit. I have worked with that group for 22 years, age 16 up to age 30. And your son and your daughter need to hear your voice every day until they're at least 30. I'm not talking about, you know, raising poodles. I'm not talking about being soft or anything like that. They need to hear your voice, your physical voice every day. Pick up the phone every afternoon or every evening and talk to your daughter or your son if they're away. And listen genuinely listen to what they say ask them questions and listen not listen to respond or listen to preach or le or, or or listen to uh um to give them the latest sermon just ask them questions about their day and listen to understand open your mouth and open your ears and then shut your mouth and listen and listen to understand and if you do this every day whether they're at home with you or whether they're They'll always, you'll always have that special connection. You'll always have that special connection. So when you get home tonight, make sure you, you hug your queen and tell her how much you love and respect her and hug your children or call your children on the phone and tell them how much you love them. There will come a day, there will come a final day when you speak to your queen for the very last time. You may think that's a long way away, but you don't know. There will be a last day you speak to your queen. There will be a last day you speak to your son or daughter. Think about that. There will be a last day that you speak to your son or daughter. And there'll be a last day you speak to your mom or your dad. A lot of men have experienced that long ago. But this is the mentality of picking up the phone and making that call. This is the mentality of heading home after work and hugging your queen and hugging your children. When you walk through that door, the number one habit you should have to feed the good wolf is to give your wife a hug and to tell her how much you love and respect her eye contact and to do the same for your children. Doesn't matter if, they, if, they're, if they're embarrassed or whatever, just to constantly tell them you love and respect them and how proud you are of them, and how you know they're gonna do great things in this world. That's how a king operates. When the king does not rise, the kingdom dies. We have a lot of kingdoms that are die, diving in our, and dying in our world because the king comes home and flops on the, on the couch and pours himself a drink and checks out mentally in front of his queen and his kids. Cowards, cowards and mental slaves instead of kings and heroes and badass champions. When you come home tonight, make sure you hug your wife and children and tell them how much you love and respect them. 
uh, you'll feel better and they'll feel better and the, and the world will be a better place because of it. Feed the good wolf, feed the good wolf. Two words, if I don't have, by the way, if you're not on my fax number, today's the last day for you to send your fax in. I'm gonna be sending a fax this Friday, one of my money marketing faxes, it's for free. It's my best stuff because it's off the grid. I don't have to work. I don't have to worry about big tech or or uh, big brother watching me. It's facts, right? I can write what I want. I can say what I want. I can be 100% candid. If I don't have your fax number, reply to this email and send it to Leanne. She'll add you to the fax list for free. If you don't have a fax number, grab the software before, below. It's pennies a day. It's called MFAX and it allows you to receive faxes in your email box, which is really, really slick. So you don't need a fax machine, buy the software below MFAX, and then you'll be able to receive my 50 faxes a year in your email box for free. And I'm not, I'm not bullshitting you, it's some of my very best off the grid stuff because it's off the grid because I don't have to worry about boob tube or big technology or big government or fake book or any of these other toxic platforms that are run by the bad wolf. Get that stuff out of your life. Get that horse shit out of your world. That's it for today. Send me your fax number. Two words that have changed my life. Feed the good wolf. Two words that'll change your life. Be relentless.